Blackpool's 2012 season is about to begin, and if the weather holds up, it should be a good year. In its heyday, half the population came to Blackpool. Take a train to the place named on the ticket. And where shall that be? Margate, South End, Scarborough, Western Supermare, Blackpool. Blackpool has it. Most of Britain's seaside towns thrived right up until the 70s. But once foreign holidays became cheaper, the flow to the coast began to dry up. By the 90s, Blackpool's visitor numbers were down. And the slide continued. But now, there's a £300 million drive to bring them back. I want somebody big on that stage. I want this place full. And I want people saying, bloody hell, he, he made it happen. If we do handle this wrong, we could be cut off forever. But with the recession continuing to bite and one of the wettest summers on record to deal with, how did the town they call Las Vegas on Sea cope? This is what we're aiming for. What has happened with this street? That's right. This is the whole point. My mother and my wife, they're just both barmy. I'm sure either of them would go to an open of a fridge if it had got something to do with Blackpool. This is what Blackpool needs. Nice sunny day. Uh-oh. Maybe I spoke too soon. Look at them clouds. Howard Plant is owner and manager of eight central car parks. Today, his younger brother Warren is helping out. Oh, I'm cured of this. Get it in here, come on. Time is money, money's everything. You know, stick it in here. Come on. A lot of people don't see this, but you have to do this every day. Warren, we'll do this later. There's a van down there, with a load of rubbish behind it. We'll have to wait till it goes. Come on. So let me get this last bit. Howard started out as Blackpool's first car clamper in the 1980s. Now he's in the car park business. With being the eldest brother in the family, he tends to take the father figure role. And he always like looks after us and points us in the right direction. He's not always right, but he's always the boss. <laughs> Howard and his brothers came to Blackpool from Manchester in the 1970s. I can honestly say I came to Blackpool with no shoes. Not a penny in my pocket and no shoes on my feet. Howard's business relies almost entirely on visitors coming to the town. But it's still weeks before the season starts. This was the site of a beautiful church and it was lovely. But unfortunately, nobody attended it. And uh, it was in a great location for a car park surrounded by hotels double yellow lines on the road so you know I bought it uh, demolished it and since then it's been a car park Blackpool's Grand Theatre famous for its summer variety season Holland as you know is very really flat in fact the wife left me and three days later you could still see it <laughs> Tony Joe is Blackpool's number one variety promoter. He books acts for all the town's major venues. If Jimmy can't do it, I need to know now. The offer we made to you was every Wednesday night in the summer season. If you're going to Bournemouth, you're not coming to Blackpool. So let me know now which way it is. Tony's trying to book comic Jimmy Cricket for the summer season at the Grand. I went to the doctor. I said, I've got a right toe on my left foot and a left toe on my right foot. He said, you've got myxomatosis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jimmy Cricket is now not available for the summer season in Blackpool. He's going to Bournemouth. Cheers, Dad. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. We've lost Jimmy Cricket for the summer. We'll move on. There are other artists that will... I mean, I've got to be honest with you. Everybody and his brother wants to do a summer season in Blackpool because... Uh, of the ilk of the people that we deal with, Blackpool is still the Las Vegas uh, of England. Near Blackpool's South Shore stands Howard's dream. I'd like to show you something else if you uh, can spare a few minutes. I'm just going to pull up on this car park and take you in this place. I came in with a view to demolish it and I looked at this and thought, no way. 
Howard wants this to be Blackpool's first major new venue on South Shore for 50 years. I want to make people happy. I want to put a comedy club on. I want to put headline bands on. I want to do the things that, that people say. I went to that venue, I had a great night, and Mr Plant made it happen. When I leave this earth, I want to be remembered fondly. I want people to talk about me and smile and have nice things to say about me. And car parks. Nobody loves you for a car park. Onwards and upwards. Variety promoter Tony Joe knows Howard well and is always on the lookout for new venues. He fell in love with the building, he didn't want to damage it, he thought, I'm going to have a go at this. And to be fair to Howard, it, it's something he, he, he knows nothing about. He's never gone down that road before. I want somebody big on that stage. I want this place full, and I want people saying, bloody hell, he, he made it happen. He did it, yeah. He did it. Yeah, well, I'd love, just you, love to see it full. You know I'll support you as much as I can in any way we can do it. I'm not asked about making any money out of it, you know. I just want you to do well. I'll do anything I can to make this work for you. Oh, thank you, Tony. But most things I do are successful because I endeavour to make them successful. Howard plans to renovate the theatre ready for the summer season. He just needs to find the cash. I'm very worried. Currently we're going through the worst time ever because of the recession, but that's not just me, that's everybody. The recession has hit Blackpool's B&Bs too. But in the 1960s, the height of the summer meant every room was taken in the town. Along the promenade, every single house is either a boarding house or, as it's sometimes more grandiloquently called, a private hotel. Back then, it wasn't hard for guest house owners to find a winning formula. Everything's just ordinary, simple, good food. They have that, they go out and enjoy themselves. To the pleasure beach, the young ones. To the parks, the old ones. That's Blackpool. Guesthouse owner Claire Smith has lived in Blackpool all her life. It's just wonderful, and especially driving the full length of the promenade. And in the summer, when you've got all the promenade um, filled with people, and you can hear the noise and the laughing and the jet, it's, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Together with her husband, Mark, they've been running two five-star guest houses for over ten years. So this is Drama, one of the rooms in the hotel. If I tell you all the rooms have got exactly the same facilities, so no room is better or worse, but they are completely individual in style and decor. You have to think about who's going to use your rooms and what requirements those, those people have and then try and get the room uh, to suit that. So the lighting actually works from a keycard system and we have a little remote that we sit by the bed which means that guests don't have to get up after they finish watching TV or doing whatever they're doing to turn the lights off. So all individual, it's about bright, bright light for a business person and then tone it down, dim it all down for a romantic person. The couple's only son, Ben, has returned from university down south to help out. When people put luxury hotel, what exactly does it mean? Everything that one sees, smells and touches is just that little bit better than it needs to be. That's, that's the one. Claire and Mark have high hopes that the business will continue into the next generation when they retire. Black will definitely is in my blood. There's kind of, you, can't, you can't get away from it. It's a bit like Marmite, everyone, it's a horrible cliche, but you either love it or you don't. And I definitely love it, yeah. The Smiths' guest houses are regularly full, but visitors have changed the way they come to Blackpool. For Howard, this and the motorway spelt the beginning of the end. This is the end of the M55. The M50, M55 being the, one of the major causes of the demise of Blackpool as a week holiday resort or you know a fortnightly holiday resort in the olden days. The M55 caused the people to just come for day trips. If we look, this is the main vein road into Blackpool. We need to see the traffic backing up along here. If we see the traffic going that way, it's no good for Blackpool. So we need to see a bit of a queue heading that way. 
Blackpool does need people to stay longer, and a lot rests on the million spent on renovating Blackpool's facade. It's three weeks before schools break up, and then the season really begins. The iconic Blackpool Tower has been given a £20 million makeover. Inspired by the Eiffel Tower, Blackpool Tower was built shortly afterwards in 1894, using 93 tonnes of steel to reach over 500 feet. Today, there are high winds blowing in from the Irish Sea. When that happens, the lifts can't make it up to the newly restored Tower Eye platform. When the lift's off, obviously that's our, our main headline attraction, if you would. Um, if we can't operate it, then um, our, our number one selling attraction is, uh, is out of action. Forecast today for wind speeds over 40 miles an hour, and obviously for what when we're operating the lift, anything over 40 miles an hour, it's an automatic, we close down the lift. We we'll obviously keep monitoring it through the day, and I don't know what the latest forecast 49 is. 49 miles an hour ago, 20 minutes ago, obviously, we check the ridden every hour at the moment, just to make sure, obviously, if it starts to die down, we can start getting ready to open. Well, if you were to believe the weather forecasters, and I don't know, you know, we're all in the same boat with it, aren't we? But yeah, they mentioned that it was going to be a bumper summer, that we're expecting, you know, one of the hot ones. See you at 47. Yeah, 47. Yeah, I don't know. So wind speed's 47, so as far as today's concerned, there is no lift to the tower top, so there's no Blackpool Tower I experience today. <laughs> the tower engineers have set to work on a solution. Be careful, be careful. Blackpool's tower was designed as a venue for mass entertainment. The circus sits under the tower's four legs. Once there were elephants and all manner of species. Now a human circus performs three times a day. The Tower Ballroom, home to Strictly Come Dancing and one of the last ballrooms in Britain. Chris Hopkins is one of the four ballroom organists. The ballroom has got, it's, it's, just, it's just got, it's, it's a world of its own. It's like going back in time, the thing hasn't changed since, since it was built. It's nearly a hundred, it was over a hundred years old. The world, it's a rock, and that's been here since 1928. Mr. Blackpool, Reginald Dixon, gives recitals in the ballroom. The idol of millions, he's played to audiences here for 30 years. The Tower Ballroom has been open to the public for almost 120 years. Ever since we were young, everyone went out dancing. And that's where the young men met, met the girls originally, always at the dance. The men was one side of the ballroom and the girls the other. And when the music started, there was one rush across the ballroom to pick the best looking girl in the bunch. I love watching the dancers. I'd have got up and danced. Yes, I would. If I could have found a fella, I would have done. I would have done. It's the be all and the end all, really, for an organist to play here. It's just absolutely amazing. Tony Joe is finalising his last act for the summer season schedule at the Grand Theatre. He's decided to give a club comedian a big break. Billy Hunter had a reputation. I went along to see him in Manchester, and this guy was on one of the top clubs in Manchester, packed, and he absolutely paralysed the audience. And I was crying laughing at this guy, he's so funny. And I, I sent an email to him asking for his dates so I can give him a bit more work. And he sent this email, I'll read it to you, listen to this. Can I take this opportunity to sincerely thank you for your interest? I've been deflated now and confused and frustrated for so long that to be honest, I was going to wanna watch shows I had in for the rest of the year and then quit. 
was I was just struggling to make an income. So whatever it is you can see in me, I can't thank you enough. Any road, dates for 2013. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, come and have a look at this. Wow. Uh, it's a bit dark at the moment, but uh, magnificent, isn't it? Oh. So ornate, beautiful. It is. And you, can, you don't need a mic in here. One, one. This is your home for 14 weeks, pal. Once a week, you're going to be here and uh, you'll love it. Lovely. Absolutely love it. The summer season act meet Blackpool's media. The buzz starts here and uh, everybody, as you can see, quite excited. We've got Bobby Ball over there and Roy Walker, Joe Longthorne, all being interviewed by different parts of the media, television, radio. It's great because it's a bit of a catch-up for everybody and uh, it's passing ships in the night all meeting up. If you do the summer season in Blackpool for like four months, you've cracked it. For Billy, it's his first Blackpool summer season in a theatre, which in any entertainer's diary is like Las Vegas. We're trying to present the best we possibly can this summer here in Blackpool, and I promise you we will. We're three weeks away from the opening of the summer now, and it's, it is about hope, because it's, it's how long's a piece of string. We don't know how busy or, or, uh, or not busy Blackpool's going to be, but if the weather stays like this, it'll be cracking. So you're from Rill? Yeah. Right, and uh, how long you lived in Rill? 22 years. 22 years and you come to Blackpool on holiday. So how's Rill doing? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's why you're in Blackpool, isn't it, eh? See ya. See ya. <laughs> I have got five Americans and they're all here for um, an international magicians convention. It's held every three years internationally. Last time it was in Beijing, this time it's in Blackpool. So it's very, very exciting. And Americans are always good fun, aren't they? There are things to do in Blackpool. I'm a walker and I just love walking along the promenade. It was just wonderful to see the beach and the sun was shining. It did shine yesterday in Blackpool. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Are you ready? Yeah. This is it. Oh my gosh. Oh, crumpets. Oh, oh crumpets. crumpets. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> so you see they've got holes in. Oh. Little holes. Very rare that you don't hit it off with someone. But if you don't, you think to yourself, well, it doesn't matter, you know, they're gone in a couple of days. But nine nights they're staying. Can you imagine if I hadn't liked them? Or they hadn't liked me the other way around. But fortunately, we're having great fun. They are really, really lovely people. Thank you for the great. Oh. Special treat. Oh, my pleasure, Wonderful. my pleasure. Have a good day. Have a good time, mm. yes. All enjoy right. yourselves. We'll, right. yes. we'll do, we'll do. Yes. See you later. See you later. See you later. I'm kind of calling it our season of opportunity. So this is the year that it's kind of all come together. All the, the past, you know, seven years of hard work. The new promenade is now, you know, absolutely stunning. So a lot of stuff happening and all come together really in one year. But we think of a summer resort as, as warm, warm weather where you could go bathe, the sun bathing. That's the, not what this is. The, but I think all of the UK isn't exactly sunny all the time. <laughs> Liquid sunshine. That's what we call it in California. A lot of sea Liquid calls, sunshine. Yeah. Winters are going to be enough. Hundreds of <laughs> Claire and Mark have spent years building up their business, and Ben is the heir apparent. I kind of knew that the business was here and that they'd done so much effort, and it seemed to me to be a waste to go and do anything else. Whilst at university, Ben met his current girlfriend, and it's serious. So we, we have a, you know, a lovely girlfriend who is, is great, beautiful, good for him, but lives down south, and that's where her next at least few years are while she forges her career and does her training and, and gets where she wants to be. So um, he's looking at getting a job down there, relocating down there. Well, it's serious enough to warrant me leaving Blackpool, and anyone who knows me, that, that it must be pretty serious for me to disappear down south. 
at the moment it's this bit of a curveball that's kind of swung in and, and thrown everything. We weren't expecting it, were we? No, there was no this was not on the on the books at all. As a day trip destination, the weather forecasts often don't do Blackpool any favours. So what's Blackpool in the rain then? What's it like? What, what, has anybody come here in the rain? No. It devastates you. You just, you just can't take any money. Uh, I mean, really, this, this car park should be full. It's half the price of the council's. And look at it, it's empty. If you look around, it's just empty. Howard has always made sure his car parks are close to the seafront and main attractions. You've got 2,000 hotels or so, and they've all got a little bit of parking, you know, two or three spaces. Now, if they're all empty, what chances have the car parks got? And if the car parks are all empty, it means the hotels are empty. If the hotels are empty, the lifeblood of the town is dying. Pleasure Beach is just over there, Promenade is just over there, and if you scan the area... And the Sandcastle. It's deserted. Yeah. And yet Blackpool, when we first came to Blackpool, this was alive at this time of the year. I get phone calls off my pals in the town, and they all like ask me what the car parks are doing, how busy they are, how many people are in, and I let them know, and then they, they, they know whether they're going to be earning any money at the weekend. Do you feel, are you worried that things could collapse for you? I'm very worried. At this moment in time, I've never, ever, ever had, I've never had a problem of, I've never had any vision of being able to, uh, you know, go bump or go bankrupt. If business is bad for Howard, it could spell real trouble for his theatre venture. Elaine Smith is Ben's grandmother. She likes knowing everything. She's nosy, so she likes knowing everything. And knowing everybody. Well, she knows she's always known everybody. Elaine is a retired hotelier and chairman of Blackpool Civic Trust. One missing. Right, come on, lads, where are you now? My mother and my wife, they're just both barmy. They're just, they're both obsessed with it, aren't they? Yeah. It's too extreme, aren't they? Yeah. They are, aren't they? Yeah. And they just go, I'm sure either of them would go to an opening of a fridge if it had got something to do with Blackpool. Today, Elaine is spearheading Blackpool in Bloom. I think it's uh, fine down here. I think they really try down here. This is what we're aiming for. What has happened with this street? That's right. This is the whole point of Hotel in Bloom, Blackpool in Bloom, beautiful Blackpool, to get people to do what, what they've done in this street. I mean, you can see what they've done. She never looks on a downside, and if it is down, she she's on everybody's back, silly <laughs> back up again. <laughs> Mrs. Blackpool, aren't we? Aye. Are <laughs> you Mrs. Blackpool? Well, I don't know. Lawrence Llewellyn Boeing calls me that. If she thinks that something is not right, she will work at it. Whoever it is, they don't stand a chance because she'll work on them until they change their mind. That's how determined she is. I came to live in Blackpool in 1945 and I thought I'd landed in Fairyland. It's now reinventing itself. It's getting all these up-to-date things. But it still must never lose its fun. No. And we're getting better <laughs> and better, aren't we? But however long it takes to change, it's then going to take even longer to change perceptions, isn't it? Elaine and her husband Jim ran a hotel in Blackpool until 1999. You know, you hope, you work hard. I hope we've in, in kind of taken what, what you and Jim did and taken that forward. And then you hope that in time we thought he would take it forward with his partner, wife or whatever, and it would all continue and we would all be involved in it and I think a lot of what we we do is to improve the town for future generations isn't it and, is. and he is our future generation you'll miss us too much won't you love of course come on of course you are a bit of a homeboy aren't you yes he does love Blackpool don't you of course I mean he's had that instilled in him 
Do you think you'll ever talk Rachel into coming back to Blackpool? Yes. But we bought this business with the intention of him coming into it and then this young lady has come on the scene and changed all that. So do I feel good about it? No, I feel really bad about it. Um, and he keeps saying, oh, I'm coming back and coming back and my feelings are that he won't. Because I know... He will, he'll miss I know, I know women better than he does. I thought it was just a minor blip. It might be a minor blip for you, but it's not a minor blip for me. Just stop. No. Right, no. So when are you thinking of going? As soon as I get a job, as soon as I can. But there's a future here, isn't there? That's that's a big difference as well. Well, we were, we were building a future. future. Whole, that was yes. the whole point of it, wasn't it? At the north end of Blackpool, Dave Simmons is getting ready for work. What it is, I'm a Lando driver, which is basically the old-fashioned taxis but we're, that's drawn by horses. It's a good life, really. I enjoy doing it. Dave drives a traditional horse and carriage known as a Landau along the promenade. Walk on, son. Come on, son. Just walk, loosen you up. Landau's have worked the promenade for 130 years. There are 44 licensed Landau's. Dave's father did the job before him. Have you been off yeah. then come back, eh? I've still got the passion now to what I had when I first started driving horses on the promenade. I love the job. Nothing will ever, ever tear me away from it. I'll do this job to the day I die and I'll have the passion all the way through. It's not a job, it's, it is a hobby. And that's what it is. On the south side of Blackpool, Mark Morris also works for a Landau company. He's driven Landau's for six years, but has decided to move with the times. These are the Cinderella carriages. They became very popular after Jordan got married in one of these styles. But yeah, these are the, the modern carriages, as uh, we'd like to put them. There are only three Cinderella carriages operating at the moment. We've been on the pink Cinderella style carriage. You'll see that it's very popular with the girls, the local families. The popularity of the Cinderella carriages has come at a price. They've been so popular, it got a lot of the other Landau owners and drivers, it got them very resentful of us. There's very few people speak to me within the industry. I can only assume that they're jealous because they've not fought outside the boxes themselves. We're more popular than the traditional ones at the moment. To me, the Pink Cinderellas, they shouldn't be on it, they're not tradition. You know, should, they, they should have kept it as just traditional Lando carriages. You get the old ones that come here, that when they come on the carriages, I've had it said to me many a times, you know. Oh, I remember these when I was a child, I used to come on them. Without tradition in Blackpool, it'd be now. Is it the traditional ones you want, or the princess one? one? Do you want to be a princess then? Come on then. Oh, look at that face. Oh, we've been on the other carriages, and they're nice carriages to go up and down on, but when the daughter says she wants to be a princess for the day, who am I to let her down not to be a princess? Is that right, you wanted to be a princess? Yes! Yeah. I can't tell the public how to spend their money. It's their money and their choice. It is a fun ride, don't get me wrong. It's a novelty ride, it should be in like an amu amusement park, having it giving rides around the park, you know. That would be absolutely well suited. What winds a lot of people up is when other drivers that drive the Cinderellas just load them in and then come past laughing at you, as if they're better than you. It's that's what's out of order, really. People come 
for that magical moment and to enjoy themselves. And this is what we're doing, to move forward with the 21st century. We're here and I would like to think we're here to stay. The people in the South, in London in particular, okay, consider Blackpool as shabby, worn out. What it has always been is what it will always be. It will be the place for families and people with not really a lot of money to come and have a couple of good days. Are you encouraging your son to consider staying in Blackpool and becoming B&B owners? Since they have, they can get in an investment relatively inexpensive. Yeah. And the tendency here is for our children to be educated well, then go off to uni and then go off. So we, we train them up, but we, we're not able to retain them. Now we have an issue with Ben, whereby he wants to be in the business, he wants us to buy more. But he went off to uni in Guildford in Surrey, down south. Uh, I met a lovely, lovely girl who is very good for him, who is very good for him, but she doesn't want to move up north. The passion of love will rule what he wants to do. Whether he loves the bed and breakfast or whether he loves the girl. Whatever he loves the most and that's where he's going and you can't control it, your influence at 23 years old is over. And our fear is that if we, get, if we do handle this wrong, we could be cut off forever. Right. Yeah. Does Ben have your passion? Oh yeah. It's not just me. There is Mark's mother. She's chairman of Blackpool Civic Trust. So Blackpool is absolutely within all of us. It Every dinner we have ever had amongst the family is about what's going on in Blackpool. Everybody has to make their own way in the world. We bring our kids up, bring our families up. Uh, to the best of our way we can. We teach them right from wrong. And then you've all got to go out in the world and make your own way. And just hope that you remember that we're still there. And that we still love you. I hope he goes for a little while. But I want him to come back. I, I, and I think he will come back. He loves Blackpool as much as the rest of us. But he'll definitely come back. I have no doubts about that. From Monday to Thursday, most visitors to Blackpool come for the attractions and shows. But at the weekends, it's party time and even more flood in. Howard Plant's car parks fill up and his brother Warren runs a clamping and towing business. What we're doing is a pain display car park and uh, just checking that all the vehicles I've got have paid ad adequately. People don't come back when they should do and that's where I earn my wages so if they pay Howard wins if they don't pay I win the clamping came into the town many years ago and it was Howard that brought clamping into Blackpool he got clamped in London and he thought this is a great idea. At Howard's car park near the Pleasure Beach, Warren's found the day's first victim. Is that a lucrative business? It is. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be over in the next three months because the government, in their infinite wisdom, has decided to ban it. The thing is, at the end of the season, they're going to ban the clamping and the towing and then it's going to go over to a ticketing service and his income basically at the end of this season in October ceases to exist, he'll have no income and do you know what he's going to rely on? God. I've asked him, he says, God will provide, don't worry, God will provide. But the problem with that is, is he thinks I'm God. <laughs> I love Blackpool. <laughs> Blackpool is famous for its stag and hens, and landlady Dolores has a party of girls from near her hometown of Stoke coming to stay this weekend. I don't do end nights, but these girls are absolutely lovely. 
the um, family orientated, the majority of them are, and um, they're just really good girls. Now any normal hen night or stag night they just wreck your place. They know me, they know my rules, and they abide by them actually. Dolores bought the B&B with her husband Jim a number of years ago, but tragically for Dolores, Jim died just before the summer. <laughs> I love having the girls, especially this time, because they've boosted my morale a lot. We love our Dolores. We do. Oh, he would have loved it. He would. <laughs> I know he is. He's standing here now laughing with his kilt on with us. Don't stop. Don't stop. Blackpool's stag and hen parties boomed when the council relaxed licensing seven years ago and the stag and hens haven't stopped coming. Dolores' B&B is at the quieter southern end of town. Where are we going, Gil? But the weekend action happens further north towards the centre of Blackpool. Go out, have a good dance, have a few laugh. shots, a few dances, mingle with the crowd, get involved with the whole Blackpool atmosphere. Lots of drinking and lots of dancing. <laughs> Tonight, thousands of revellers will descend on Blackpool's bars and clubs. My feet hurt. <laughs> it's so crowded in there, it's untrue. We've got pushed and shoved everywhere, don't we? Can't even hold your drink without being spilt down, yeah? Walk Literally about. can't move anywhere, it's that busy, and now we're getting attacked by a random man. <laughs> Howard started clearing the old Apollo. He's hit on a plan to raise the cash for the real work to begin. God's not making any more land. I own this, I don't owe any money on it, and one day it'll come good. And then, payday. Then the Apollo will be getting finished. He thinks the work will cost almost a million pounds. He's already buying equipment to kit out the kitchen. All this equipment and a lot more, the container that's over there and all this, was the entire contents of a restaurant in the northeast that uh, in these current climates he opened at the wrong time, should we say. He spent £750,000 kitting out a restaurant and went bankrupt and I got the entire contents of the restaurant for £25,000. Here we go. <laughs> oh Christ almighty. I can't believe how heavy it is. Are you alright lads? Right, anywhere down here. Right, oh, careful. Right. Careful slowly. David, I need you in the office. David Gardner is Howard's close friend and business advisor. If I sell this land, we'll be able to finish, we'll be able to get open on time because the sale of that land is is key to this development. Otherwise, I don't know where we're going to go with it. I really don't because I'm getting no help from the bank. Because you've got that, I know you think that's a ridiculous offer from our friend, but this guy, somewhere along the line, if we can meet someone. I'll put it to you like this he's offering twice as much as uh, Darren offered. Before. So what's the hold up? What's the hold up? I, I need a planning reference well, I'd number. Be, I'd, I wouldn't and have been sleeping last whoa, night. Whoa, whoa, I wouldn't whoa. have slept last night. Whoa. That makes this place open for the height of the season. Yeah. Come on, let's chase it up. Oh, we will do. First of all, I've tried to, uh, Fred. Now I'm going to have to ring the town hall. You can ring the town hall. It's now see. quarter past ten. Dave, I've had a delivery this morning. Yeah, no, this I've not been to the bathroom I'm yet. Not in, that is, this, this, is first, this is priority. This is my first cup we of coffee. We want to be open for the first of... Right, Come okay. On, let's get okay. going. As far as I'm concerned, that Apollo is going to be his last venture and I want it to succeed, and I want it open as soon as possible. When they talk about summer season, to me, August is the prime month, because there's no schools, no colleges, that is prime holiday time, and that's when I want to be open for. And the only way we're going to do it is by pulling more money in than that's coming in at the moment. And as far as I'm concerned, this is just a dead plot.
we're about to meet Joe Longthorne, who's one of the stalwarts of variety and the biggest earner of money in Blackpool. He always turns up for me. Joe loves Blackpool. I mean, Joe could live anywhere in the world. There are more stars living in this town than, than anywhere else in the country, including London, uh, from variety. So you're right. Good. Yeah, you're looking good. I feel good. I feel all right. I'll name that tune in one. <laughs> Variety Club has recognised him as the most promising artist of 1983, Joe Longthorne. He's performed all over the world, including London's Royal Albert Hall and the Sydney Opera House. And he still has a devoted army of fans. This is going to sound really strange, but I've requested that that goes into my coffin with me when I die so that I get Joe. I will take him with me into the other world. Because he's so down to earth, um, you get actually get to speak to him, and I think that's what everybody likes. It's quite a very rare, unique character characteristic, something he possesses. Whether it's from his background or his parents, but he's exceptional. You know, many people imitate him. Many people claim to be, you know, the Joe Longthorn experience around these tribute bars and that. But seriously, there is only one Joe Longthorn. Actually, I've got a very, very understanding husband. I've been with him 27 years. And he's, um, and I've known, well, I've been seeing Joe 25 of those. And he's, um, he's never said, no, you can't go. Is your husband in any way jealous of your attentions, Joe Longthorn? He says he isn't. But I think if it was the other way around, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let him go and see a female artist as much as I go and see Joe. So we're going to see my friend Marjorie, who has come down from Barrow for the whole summer season, that's 13 weeks, just so that she can see Joe every Thursday night. Hi Marjorie, hello. I thought I'd come and say hello to yeah. you because I know you're here. Yeah. Are you alright? That's fair, yeah. Jolly good, yes. Was your journey down nice? Good. Quite good. Good? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. You don't take as many now, though, do you? No, not like no, you. Not I've got like so many. I yeah, just, you, you, what, you do what, what do you do with them? What do you do with them? This is the point. Yeah. Got all these flowers. Yeah. Those are exquisite, oh, aren't they? Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, I think that was uh, the one at the Opera House because you can see his hair's a bit longer on that one. It is. So there's yes. something about Joe that you, you just cannot put your finger on it uh, yeah. with singing and, and as a person. Yeah. You just uh, there's, there's just something about him. We've always said if we knew what it was, we'd bottle, we'd bottle it and sell, sell it, it and we'd make a fortune. Yep. Joe Longthorn, I love you. With a felt tip pen. Blackpool is now filling up steadily with tourists. Just near the Pleasure Beach, Howard is on his rounds. Uh, it's doing all right actually today. I think you can't really beat you can't really beat full, can you? The sunshine puts a lot of smiles on the face. It's school holidays, so uh, if we're not full this week, then it's time to give up. And we see how much money's in here. Oh, oh! We've got an heavy one. That's not like a lot. We've had a good week. Well, that's that's mostly this last two days. Howard's busiest car park is just off the town centre. This is the school holidays. This is what Blackpool needs. Nice sunny day. Uh oh. Maybe I spoke too soon, look at them clouds. Um, a nice day, get some all here, school holidays. We need 26 weeks of this. Look, it's full, it's full, thank you God. You managing okay? Yes, yeah, All right then, see you later. Even away from the centre and close to the back street bars, it's busy there too. Right, first part of the job, look round. If you see anybody with knives or guns, don't do this. Oh, 
Can I help you, girls? Trying to get some change. She's off the bank card. I can help you. Thank I have you. plenty of change. <laughs> Whereabouts do you stay usually? We don't. We never. We don't come here. You don't come here. First no. time. First time ever with Blackpool Virgin. We're going to go to the Bruns. We can have a better. Listen, girls. Seriously. You can't break these boys' hearts. These men that have come to Blackpool, they're going to be out in the bars drinking, they're going to bump into you lot, they're going to we're have gonna a kiss. They're going to break their hearts. Yeah, and then we're you're going to tell us, I'm, I'm sorry, mate, it's half past 11, we've got to get home before 12 o'clock. Where should we go to drink? Soul Sweet, Litton Tree, Shea Bar, get to town. Just think of the hearts you're going to break tonight. Everyone. You have a nice night tonight. See you later. Oh, but they were nice girls. <laughs> They'll have a laugh. They've come to Blackpool for the day for a laugh. They've just come for a day trip, so uh, that's what we need. Fans of Blackpool Variety star Joe Longthorn are getting ready for opening night. Does that look all right, Mum? Yes. It must be a wonderful sight for Joe, don't you think? When 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 he comes on stage, and that theatre is absolutely full, and, and they're all standing up in the stalls like they do for him. Oh gosh, what a welcome! I think the theatre will be full tonight really full. It's going to be really warm in that theatre tonight. That's why I've put this short sleeve top on instead of one with longer sleeves. And we're excited, aren't we? Yeah. I am excited, yeah. It's almost curtain up at the Grand Theatre. Are we walking in? Yeah. <laughs> right, Flo. I'd love to be here, you? <laughs> you are. Uh, hello. 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 I won't push, you know what I'm like. There you go. Do you like me new boots and things? Yeah, my shit looks great. You okay? Right, yeah, fine. How about 12 opening nights with Joe Longthorne? That's how we all know these people personally, because they come to every show. Every show. Hundreds of tickets have gone in advance, but more are being sold at the door. Before Joe's set, it's comedian Roy Walker. Is any vegetarians in? The hands up, any vegetarian? See that? They don't even have the strength to get their arms. <laughs> Joe will perform a 90 minute set of old favourites. Anyone will tell you there's nothing else like being on that stage like that and then receiving a round of applause like that. It's just, it's what it's all about. Fantastic show, wasn't it? One when of the he best. sang somewhere, yeah. it, was, oh, yeah. it was amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, made me cry actually. Very high, very high. Don't sleep, you know, it takes you a long time to come down after you've seen Joe. I've got my, my son and daughter and my mum here. Sophie comes with me very often, she really loves him as well. Richard doesn't come very often, but he, he does love him, he does like him. Some of those people have been with me for more than 35 years. And, uh, and it's good because, you know, you get, you get the young ones there, but in my fan club we have people from, like, about 10 years old up to 110, would you believe? So, another good night and thanks. David is supervising the centre of town's car parks. Yes, sir. Feel free, park up there. Some have you got change for the machine? I'm not sure. What? What do you need change of? I'll give you some change. That's what I'm here for. Dave's crucial. He's the oil that makes the engine run. He's, uh, it's his, it's his enthusiasm. He, he, when you get down, he spurs you on. He wants you to, he wants me to be successful. He wants me to win. He wants me to achieve goals. Good morning. Are you well? All right. Good weekend. Not bad. 
it's all part of the job, you know. We don't just want to stand and take the money. Um, anybody can do that, but we want them to come back. They'll remember this car park, and when they come back to Blackpool, they'll come to this car park, because they'll remember how we looked after them. Well, I'm going to ring Dave now, anyway. Hello. Morning, how are you doing? What are you up to? I've got some really bad news about that lad that was looking at the land. He gave me the plans back and said it was just uh, just not viable right now. So that's gone by by the the way. The land sale has fallen through, and so too have plans for the renovation. Along the promenade, next to Blackpool Tower, someone has beaten Howard to the punch and opened a new entertainment venue. David and Howard can't resist the chance to check out the opening night. A lad called Lady Johns. I think he's called Lady Johns. After the duet, I'll then come on and join you for the meatloaf. Then, Emmy, you'll stay on. OK. I like All the right. comedy and meatloaf that you do. I'm going to keep today. it in. Well, tonight's the opening night of Viva. All the hard work's all paid off. We've got 500 people that are going to come through the doors, pre-booked, and I'm elated. Lee D. Jones has negotiated a long and cheap lease on an ex-bingo hall. It took him just six weeks to get it ready for tonight's show. That's good, isn't it? An escalator, how are we going to top this? The venue is sold out. And you know something, it's lovely to see somebody opening something in Blackpool instead of bloody closing. I think the show's great. The, the effort he puts in is Yeah, he does work hard at it, but I think he's let himself down with the sound system. The, the main thing about the place is... It it's a modern a... building and an old building, isn't it? And, yeah. And there's well, no character in it. I mean, it's, it's just a simple, simple building. Where's the character in it? Where's the pillars? Where's the... It's just not there. We have a golden venue. I think it's sensational. Next week might, we might not take no money, but hey-ho, we've opened a venue on Blackpool Promenade. How many people can do that? Not a lot of people can do that. Ours is a unique building. This is something on the top of a load of shops. It's a nothing. You know, a complete different ball game. And I can promise you, when the people come, It'll have the character, it'll have the professionalism, it'll have the act, and we'll get the people in. It's the end of the summer, and 20,000 people brave another torrential downpour to watch the illuminations being switched on. Hello and welcome to Blackpool 2012. Celebrating a hundred years of the illuminations. We've never seen it before and it's the ever 21st, so I thought it was a perfect occasion to come down and celebrate it. My mum and dad come to Blackpool every year, so they were like, You're 21st, why not? Go see the illuminations, there's a big concert. So yeah, good times, good times. Emergency ponchos! Ponchos! Someone told me it was gonna rain, so I thought I'll just take the risk, buy some ponchos, come out here, bang them out for two pounds, make some quick money. It's been a hundred years since the illuminations were first switched on and this long-standing tradition has brought in stars and celebrities to turn on the lights. In 1959, Hollywood star Jane Mansfield pulled the lever. That's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm completely speechless. In 1977, racehorse Red Rum had a go. You know, there's only one thing better than Red Rum, that's his wife. Blue <laughs> More recently, Robbie Williams threw the switch. It's carnival. It's Britain's answer to the Rio. <laughs> the Mardi Gras in New Orleans, if you like. It is carnival. It's a great atmosphere. The whole attitude of people changes once the illuminations are switched on. Oh, look at that way. Look, look at the people. Look. It's war to war people. This year, five of Britain's Olympians did the honours. Here we go! Oh, yes! Here we go! Get in! 
That's Blackpool, that's Blackpool Illuminations. What a fantastic moment. Absolutely stunning, they're on. I wouldn't like the electric bill though. We've just had the Blackpool 2012 Illumination switch on and it's been fantastic. The 100 switch on. 100 switch on, that's absolutely right, yes. Yes, so we felt very, very proud this evening. I promise you, I wish it were like this every night. Look at the people, this is, uh, <laughs> this is what we need. <laughs> Carnival, <laughs> Carnival. You need to play for Newcastle. <laughs> feel good, feel good. <laughs> And it's rained again. Of course it's rained. Rain, rain, go away, come back another day. Who comes to Blackpool for the weather? Nobody. The peak of Blackpool season is now over. Howard still has no takers for his plot of land and his dream is put on hold. Because you're better setting the target for next year and launching it perfect, finished, ready, with plans so we know exactly where you want to go with it. And 12 months is good, you know. You're right, you're right. I'm doing me, me very best to perfect everything so that there's no problems when we get open. And, and you're right, this season's been diabolical, so it's good that when I do open, it opens as a success Absolutely. rather than a struggle. The season is never what you're hoping for because you always want it to be better than it is. So no, it hasn't been as good as we expected it to be and it hasn't been as good as we hoped it would be, but it hasn't been that bad either. What's the worst part of the season? The worst part of the season is quiet nights and the weather working against you and not enough people being in town, blah, blah, blah. And if you say, what's the best part of the season? The best part of the season is the Joe Longthorne show with Roy Walker. It's been packed and it's, it's, it's broken box office records again, better than last year, which is fantastic. When you work for yourself, it's always a worry. You, have, you, you put everything in place for it to be a good year, but you are always fearful of the events that happen outside of that. The weather, the football, all kinds of things that you hold no control over. You can do everything you think right, spend the money, look after the guests, make the place look lovely, but it's about bringing the visitors in. But thank goodness, 2012, Business Wise has been a really good season. I have every confidence in Blackpool will uh, rebound out of this. I've uh, devoted my whole life to Blackpool, I'm not going to leave. It's amazing if we got sunshine in Blackpool, this town would be a gold mine. I'm looking forward to next year, because next year I'll make it, I'll make things better. So you better get me some stars. Got it, mate. It's all ready. I'll tell you. You can have anybody you want. It's, it's as simple as that. I'm looking at Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know, we're looking at bands. We're looking at status quo would be good. Yeah, madness. Madness, yeah, absolutely madness. We can have Engelbert Umberdink, we can have Joe Longthorne, we can have Chilby Brown. We does anything. Buddy Greco's too. With the biggest laughs from 2012, have I got a bit more news for you? It's next. <laughs>